So I'm walking down the street, you know, looking around for this joke because I don't go outside, but I'm there. And, uh, you know, the standard yard sale with uh, comic books and maybe some old video games and things. But here's the thing. That stuff wasn't prominently set right in the in the front. They had like lawn furniture and stuff, you know, so. I don't want lawn furniture. Here's the thing, too. Why would you need furniture for the lawn? The lawn's outside. You shouldn't be sitting outside. You should be sitting inside. So I didn't really understand that. So I, you know, the, the whole thing just bothered me. And, and that was kind of the end of it, to be honest. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. Today, in part two of our Autopilot V2 series, we're going to be taking a look at the ownership of the device, uh, the personal versus uh, corporate category, and how that's different in this version of Autopilot, and what we can do to put some automation around it. I mean, they're using lawn furniture as a come on, so... Get Rubix. Solving for the modern workplace. Okay. So one of the big differences with this autopilot device prep, um, and this is the device that we added yesterday through autopilot. And I do want to show you this very interesting. So the, the device is in here as a corporate device because once it fully enrolled and it got the autopilot profile, that's, that's how it shows up. What I wanna do is I kinda wanna show you the behavior here. So if I go to devices, Windows, enrollment, and if I were to go to platform restrictions for Windows, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna see, we're gonna see that I am allowing personally owned Windows devices. So this isn't something we generally would want to do, right? And that was kind of the point of autopilot is was to specify the corporate device. So I'm going to go ahead and block that. Okay, so with that block, I want to run us through that one more time, uh, the autopilot enrollment. Okay, so we're going to keep things simple here. I'm going to use the Hyper-V built into this machine. Um, so I have a device. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with it. And we're going to do exactly what we did yesterday. Remember, autopilot doesn't take effect until the user signs in. So we're just going to follow the same steps from yesterday. Okay, so at the sign in again, we set up for work or school. And we're going to still use Rick Jones because he's the only user in here. Um, 7960 dot Microsoft.com. Okay, should get the MFA prompt. Okay, so you can see we're getting hit with the feature is not supported. Contact your system administrator. So what's actually happening here? What's actually happening is, remember, if we think about the flow from yesterday. Ah, I saved it. This all starts when the user signs in. So when it signs in um, and Intune says, OK, I'm going to deploy your profile, uh, it's not going to deploy the profile because it can't enroll in Intune because we are blocking personal devices. This is a fundamental shift I want to talk about between the different versions of autopilot is that when you're using the autopilot device prep there, remember, there's no device registration. This is a personally owned device, right? So if you are blocking personally owned, which I mean, honestly, we should be in a corporate environment. You can't use it. So then how's this going to work? So there is a solution to this. The solution is to use the corporate device identifiers. So when we go in Intune to devices, enrollment, corporate device identifiers, we have the ability to add devices manually that are essentially um, considered uh, corporate, right, before they're even enrolled, so that when they go to uh, enroll in Intune, Intune knows about them. It's essentially like giving the device, uh, giving the device's information to the bouncer in the front of the club. I don't know why I said that. I don't go to clubs. So it's kind of a form of pre-registration. So how does it work? Hold up. Hold up. All right. Here's what happened. 
this stuff takes a lot of time to go through. So we started filming this thing. I don't know what day it is. It doesn't matter. We started filming it. We started showing the corporate identifier stuff. And then it became apparent online that it wasn't working. Uploading a corporate device identifier to Intune didn't in fact make the device corporate. So if you're blocking personal in the autopilot enrollment, it's still not going to work with the new autopilot device prep. Um, let me show you real quick. Okay, so this was published today, uh, talking about the new autopilot experience. They mark the corporate identifiers as coming soon. So this is not, apparently this is not um, available now at initial release, but I think what happened is it was just like a discovered bug, so they threw it in the backlog as something they're, they're working on soon. But we're going to need the corporate identifiers. It's going to work hopefully very soon. And this way we'll be ready when the time comes. And hopefully I'll give you this way to automate it. So in order to register a device as corporate without using the traditional autopilot hash method, um, you can click add and we have to use upload CSV file. That's the only uh, available way to do it right now with a Windows device. And you see ma manufacturer, model, and serial number. And we can click here to import our CSV. But how do we get the CSV? Well, luckily there's some great write-ups already. So one of which comes from Simon. Simon's a great Microsoft resource, another MVP. I do not want to butcher his last name, so I'm just going to leave it out and leave a link to his blog below. But I've spoken to Simon a few times and he's a great guy. So Simon uh, took the liberty for us to make a recent blog post on how we can easily generate this CSV uh, using PowerShell. And I am going to show you how to do that. So uh, by using the information in Simon's blog, let's say we wanted to upload um, this PC uh, that we're on right now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up PowerShell ICE. Let's go as an administrator. So you need three uh, key pieces of information for this. You need the uh, manufacturer of the PC. You need the model. Let me make this a little bigger. There we go. And you need the serial number. So in order to get those, we can just uh, query two WMI objects. The first one is computer system. And that will be get WMI objects class win32 computer system. And the second is the BIOS get WMI object class win32 BIOS. And now what we do is we just kind of fill these in. So the manufacturer is equal to get uh, the computer system dot manufacturer the model is equal to uh, what do we have here we have computer system dot model and lastly the serial number is bios dot serial number And now we just assemble our data string. So it's one string and inside of it, we have manufacturer comma model comma serial number dollar serial number. And that's it. So now we set the content. Our path, I'm going to use a local folder I have called C resources. I'm going to call it corp ID dot CSV doesn't really matter what we call it and the value will be that data so let's go ahead and generate that and now when I open it up let's look at it with the notepad because we don't want to open an excel that can mess it up and now we have our CSV of the three pieces we need so if we go back to Intune add upload CSV select the manufacturer model and serial and we go to choose that file we can hit add and this device is now um, going to be considered a corporate device. 
okay according to according to Intune. okay and that's all you would need to make that corporate okay so that's uh part two of our series or i guess this would be the part one of this corporate identifiers thing because i'm gonna do a follow-up i want to go over the personal versus corporate situation with the autopilot device preparation and at least explain how the corporate identifiers work what I'm going to show you next is how we automate that process. So let's say you have a lot of devices that you want to automatically upload uh, the corporate identifiers for so that they're ready for autopilot device prep. We're going to do that with the graph and some Azure automation. Let me know your thoughts in the Discord. It's really fun to be uh, messing with something this early in the process. So I am having a blast. We'll be seeing you.